Happy Friday, Shabbat Shalom. I'm live here in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale region. Thank you for all of your prayers. It seems that the storms have subsided. It is still a bit gloomy overhead. But truly, there's been flash floods, historic flash floods, they say, in the Miami region. And isn't it just like the Lord? Isn't it just like how it is when a man, woman of God steps into a region? Bam, unusual things begin to happen. Can I get an amen? Hey, today I want to talk about uncommon favor. Give us some hearts and likes. So let me know where you're watching from. It's Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. It is Friday. Shabbat Shalom. And we are in Shavuot, Pentecost, Blessings and Overflow. I'm so happy to talk with you today. I want to minister the word of the Lord over your life. And I believe for great, great breakthrough. Great breakthrough. Amen. Um, exciting news. Exciting news. Um, I just finished chapter five of my new book, my latest book this morning. Literally about a few minutes ago. Finished chapter five and... We are at about 13,000 words on chapter five. Now it's gonna be a stacked book. Um, I know this new book that I'm working on, it's truly gonna be a game changer. It's a much needed book. Uh, there's nothing like it that I've seen on the market on Amazon online. So uh, you know when God gives you a word or gives you an assignment, a vision, revelation, it's for you and it is specific, it's anointed. And the anointing abounds as you step into that grace. But you must step into that word. And as you see it manifest come to pass, then you're going to see the anointing that's behind it. The power of God that backs it up, that backs you up, that is behind it. And uh, if God's favor is not on something, I don't want to do it. If God's favor is not on uh, a project, a thing, an entity, then I don't want to partner with it because who you knows that we need to tap into the favor of God. And I'm here to declare over you that there's going to be an overflow of God's favor, an overflow of the blessings and the abundance of heaven. Somebody say amen. So give us some hearts and likes. Begin to pray in the spirit as you jump on this broadcast. Help me to build up the room in the name of Jesus. Help us to build up this atmosphere, because in a couple of minutes, I'm going to begin to release the word of the Lord. I am here in Miami tonight, Friday night. I'm ministering prophetic night in Miami. Then Sunday, I'm ministering as well. And it's Father's Day. And what happened on Father's Day, all right? There was a revival called the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida, many years ago. And of course, people like Daniel Kalinda, Michael, Dr. Michael Brown, Eric Gilmore, so many people were touched by this Brownsville revival. Amen. Shakaraba. And really, the Brownsville revival was characterized with repentance and just the holiness of God. And so the Father's Day revival is called the Brownsville revival because on Father's Day, many years ago, began the outpouring, the revival called the Brownsville revival. And I believe this Father's Day, this weekend, the Lord's going to release a blessing from heaven. There's going to be an outpouring, an impartation, a grace. There's going to be a glory that comes over the church. Somebody say amen. Everything that can't be shaken will be shaken. And whatever remains shall remain. And I believe God is shaking things up. He's heating things up. And there's great breakthrough that's coming, manifesting. Somebody say amen. So give us some hearts and likes. Help us to break the algorithms today. Just as we're starting off. Amen. 
Of course, Facebook and Meta Land, Meta World is trying to restrict and constrict. But the devil is a liar. We plead the blood of Jesus and we de declare breakthrough on his broadcast. Somebody say amen. So let me know where you're watching from. Hallelujah. The man of God, Dr. Pastor Ben Lim is here in the house. Praise God. And I want to give you some shout outs very quickly. Amen. God is on the move. God is up to good. In fact, God is up to more good than the devil is down doing bad and evil. That's what I like to say, because that's the truth. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Rebe socorramande. Rebe socorrabasa. Thank you, Jesus, for an activation of the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus, for a Holy Ghost fire combustion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to talk about uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. And uh, on this Friday, I mean, we could call it Favor Fridays, but I don't know about you, but I'm God's favorite. Okay, I'm God's favorite, okay? God really does favor me, but favor is given to the faithful. And favor is given, entrusted, bestowed to those who are faithful with the measure of gifting, of obedience, all right? Everybody has a measure of favor. That's why Luke 2.52, the Bible says, Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. One of my favorite passages. And in fact, I did a whole two and a half, three hour Zoom webinar on the favor of God, the FOG, the fire, the oil, the glory, the favor of God, the FOG. So I did a whole two and a half, three hour Zoom webinar on the favor of God. But you need to understand that you were God's favorite. God favors you above others. Now, it doesn't mean that he prefers you, but it just means that you've shown yourself obedient and faithful. Therefore, you are number one in line, amen, because you're number one to obey him and to love him and to be with him in Jesus' name. So today I wanna to talk about uncommon favor. And then once again, let's just go here. Luke 2.52, hallelujah. We'll go here. If you're happy to be here, say amen. Glory be to God. If you're happy to be here, say amen. Jesus. I'm here in Fort Lauderdale area. Beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, before we go into this passage, I want to just begin to give some shout outs here. Yeah, it's good to see you, Demetrius. Kimberly Amsterdam, God bless you. Lashira, bless you. And Alex, we missed you guys last night for our 7 a.m. Brother Apostle Patrick, good to see you from Kenya. Pastor Sharon, Providence Ivana, Terry Ann, blessing Sherry Surat, Beam, Deborah Connor, amen, from Virginia, God bless. Thought I saw my son, Pastor John Bayer earlier, Sherry Surat, Beam, yes. Love Israel, amen. Shalom, Ui, Melissa Sawana, bless you, sister. Anthony Moreno. Juan Martinez, thanks for being a subscriber. Susie Harun, Joyce Preston, Vanetta Shoulder, yes. Jeannie Gris Grigspoor from South Africa. Lori Wilson Phoenix, wonderful. Glory to God, yes. Hello, Betty, God bless you. Silas Antonala, hallelujah. Randy Mansfield. De yes, amen. Well, everybody lift up your hands. Manel Navarro. Father, I thank you right now on this broadcast, on this Favor Friday. I declare the fire and the favor of heaven to come upon them in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's people say amen. Zenmar, God bless you. From the Philippines. I love the Philippines. Bless you. Mwah. Hey, listen. Good news is coming. Good news is coming. And we just finished Passover. Uh, excuse me. We just finished Pentecost, Shavuot. So good news is coming. But today I want to talk about uncommon favor. And here we read, as I pinned to the top, Luke 2.52. Amen. Luke 2.52. The Bible says that Jesus grew in favor, increased, excuse me, in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So how do you grow in your favor? You grow in your favor first by wisdom and stature. Because stature stands for the embodiment of your presence, the authority of your presence. Do you have a commanding authority? Do you have a commanding presence? And the more you grow in wisdom, the more your spirit, the more your presence is felt. It's called the felt anointing. It's called the felt presence. And just like a little tugboat or a huge cargo rig ship, 
You could feel the daunting presence of a cargo ship versus a little tugboat. So when you grow in wisdom, your stature begins to increase. All right, stature can even stand for the broadening of your shoulders. Like a young man, you know, becoming a man and his shoulders widening. Greater responsibility, greater authority, greater notoriety. Amen. I felt the fire of God. And as Jesus himself grew in wisdom and stature, he also grew in favor with God and with man. Now, many of us, you can have favor with man, but we don't have favor with God. Or how about this? You have favor with God, but not favor with man. And so many people in the world, secular people in the business world, they have favor with man, but they don't necessarily have favor with God. Or how about this? Many of us Christians, believers, we have favor with God, but not favor with man. Okay, we love the Lord. We know God loves us. And, you know, we're good Christians. We're good religious churchgoers. But we do not bear the favor of man because we don't know how to walk in wisdom. We have not, you know, gained doors open, notoriety, reputation, honor in public. So there is a conflict because God wants you to have favor with God and with man. And Jesus himself grew in favor, okay? I want you to comment, I can grow in favor. You can grow in favor. And I believe here on Facebook years ago or a while ago, I talked about your favor tank. That you can grow your favor tank, okay? Just like everybody is a vessel, everybody is a, a vessel, a pod. Every single one of us, we have a measure of favor on our lives. And we have a favor tank and we can grow and fill and overflow everyone's favor tank. Think about the Bible, all right? It says that there are bowls of intercession in heaven. There are bowls of prayer, bowls of intercession, and these bowls, these super bowls of prayer will continue to fill up as we pray and intercede and that suddenly it begins to overflow. So God wants you to grow in your favor, okay? Now, once again, every single person we shout about, we have a dimension, a level, a measure of favor. Now, from a young age, I knew that there was favor on my life. From a young age, even before I backslid, even before I went into the world, I knew there was a measure of favor on my life. How so? Let me describe it. A measure of favor equates, equals responsibility, okay? The greater the burden, the greater the responsibility, the greater the favor, right? And so many people think responsibility is a curse. But let me tell you, responsibility is a blessing because that is actually the opportunity for you to pass the test, for you to increase and to be trusted with more. Can God trust you with favor? And oftentimes, the Lord cannot give out more favor to an individual, to a person, because they're spoiling it, they're misusing it, mishandling it. But when you are faithful with the little, you will become faithful over much. Can I get an amen? And God wants to increase your sphere of influence, increase your metron, that's right, Rob, your realm of favor. And everybody walks in different dimensions and realms of favor. Somebody say amen. You can tap into these realms of favor by honoring different men, honoring different women, by receiving from certain people. There's different levels and realms of favor that every single one of us walk in. Now that word favor, amen, that word favor in the Greek, it literally means, it literally means gift and grace, okay? That word favor means gift and grace. And when you have a gift or when you have a grace, it means that you've been entrusted with a gift from the Father, okay? It means that you have a gift, you are a gift, and you're, you're meant to give it away, okay? Gifts are meant to be enjoyed, not be packed and packaged up somewhere and put on a shelf. Gifts are meant to be given. Gifts are meant to be shared. Gifts are meant to be open and enjoyed, okay? So favor means gift and grace. Now, God wants to gift you. God wants to grace you. And it's really the grace of God means the hand of God on your life. I'm telling you, you are the evidence of God's hand on this earth. Your life is meant to be the evidence, the demonstration, the witness, the proof, the living proof that there is a God in heaven and that he favors man, he favors people, that his hand is upon God's people, even in these times. Can I get an amen? So God wants you to grow in your gift, in your grace, in your favor. His hand 
wants to be manifested even greater, more stronger, more assuredly, more visible than ever before. So we're living in a day where we need the uncommon favor of God. Why? Because there is an uncommon realm. Uncommon means uh, unprecedented, never seen before, never experienced before. It means brand new. It means something out of our realm, our spectrum, our metron, our perspective. There's greater levels of uncommon favor. And when you have uncommon favor, that means things begin to happen in your life. That would not happen otherwise. Doors begin to open. Miracles begin to happen. Favor, finances, prosperity, provision begins to happen. When you begin to walk in the uncommon favor of God, unusual miracles that can only be described by the hand of God, by the finger of God. Only Jesus gets the credit because it's uncommon. It's out there. It's out of the box. It's unusual. All right. It's uncommon for you to be alive today. It's uncommon for you to sell this many houses. It's uncommon for me at 33 to be doing what I'm doing. But because you've been able to be faithful and believe with faith, because you've been able to say yielded to God and believe in his word, therefore he releases and pours out uncommon favor. Favor that is out of this world that makes the angels wonder. Favor that most people do not have and most people cannot tap into. Somebody say hallelujah. There's an uncommon favor that's coming to your house. Uncommon grace. Uncommon, unusual, out of the box, out of the blue. Different, distinct. There is an unusual anointing that's coming to you. Somebody say amen. I believe God wants us to grow in our favor. And his uncommon favor is open and available for every single one of us. God bless you, Pastor Carlos. We're going to talk soon. Now, listen, I want to go to the main verse here today. If you're with me today, say amen and help me to build the room. Give some hearts and likes and share. Tag, tag, tag. God bless everybody that is here today. Genesis 26, 12 to 14. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. More and more until he became very wealthy. He had positions of flocks and herds and many servants so that the Philistines even envied him. My gosh. Favor causes envy to be present. Favor causes envy, jealousy, even betrayal to be present. Because favor will always expose what is on the inside of the hearts of men. Now, obviously, you can ask yourself, I want you to hear me. There's people that are maybe excelling, increasing, advancing in areas of their lives, and you may look at yourself and you may look at them and begin to compare. Comparison is a lie of the enemy. It is from the pit of hell. Can I get an amen? And many times, many of us, we can begin to compare. It's, it's part of the fallen nature of human. And we, we can begin to compare and we be, begin to condemn ourselves or fall into a spirit of condemnation. And we can say, why are they excelling? Why are they favoring and not me? You see, favor stirs up jealousy. Favor stirs up envy. The most important thing that we must do when we see others being favored in their area and their lives is celebrate, give thanks. When you celebrate and when you give thanks, for their breakthrough, their breakthrough can also become your breakthrough. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you that long awaited, that delay is breaking. God's about to release abundant favor over your life in Jesus' name. But how we deal with the insecurity, how we deal with uh, our own inner battles is between you and God. And when you pass the test, by celebrating, by giving thanks, by honoring, by recognizing. And when you celebrate, then you begin to pass the test. And God begins to release that same type of favor in your life. Now, this passage of scripture that we just read that I really want to talk about today is favor and famine. And we see that Isaac sowed in a time of famine. Isaac sowed in a time of famine and therefore he gained and grew in great favor. Somebody shout favor. Here the Bible says that he became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. Come on, favor ain't fair. So much favor 
that it's going to make all of your enemies mad, jealous, and mad angry. But the Bible says the Lord blessed him and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. The key to the overflow is that God is with him. The key to the overflow is that God blessed him. You see, the blessing of God adds no sorrow to it. So when God begins to bless, there is a point that he's trying to make. He releases an exclamation point and he makes a point with your life. Somebody say uncommon favor. I'm, I'm telling you, I believe right now in this month of June, in this season, we're about to see uncommon favor, miracle signs and wonders, outbursts of glory, expressions and manifestations of the power of God. We're going to see uncommon favor because God is with us. I don't want it if God's not in it. I don't want to go forward if God doesn't go forward. Because God blessed Isaac. He was able to grow in favor and grow in prosperity and in the blessings of heaven. I believe we're going to see it right now where God is saying uncommon favor is at your disposal, is at your hand. Somebody say amen. Listen, in the last month, I just finished one of my books and I sent it off to the editor. So now these book, this book is being edited in the process of editing. And I just started a new book. Amen. And that can be a sign of uncommon favor. That can be a sign of unusual blessing, of unusual grace. Amen. But I'm sharing this with you because there is a way to grow in uncommon favor. Okay, are you ready for this? There's a way for you to break through levels, stagnation. There's a way for you to grow in that uncommon favor. Amen. Are you ready? Number one, you must yield yourself to the Lord. Okay, when you yield yourself to God, praise God. When you yield yourself to the Lord, that means that you're making yourself available to the hand and to the move of God. Way too many times we're too busy. We're too occupied. In fact, we're too distracted. The enemy wants to distract you. Remember, if the enemy cannot destroy you, he will distract you. And many of us were distracted by little traumas, dramas, little Nancy's, negative Nancy Pelosi's. We're, we're distracted by all of the nonsense going on. So therefore, we're not able to fully yield ourselves make ourselves available to the Lord. We're too busy. We're too busy. We're too busy playing God, being God. We're too busy thinking that we know better and thinking that we're greater when we're really not. So the number one key to growing in uncommon favor is yield ourselves to God. Why? Because when you yield yourself to Jesus, it means you're waiting upon him. You're waiting on his word. Waiting on his grace, his fire to fall. You don't want to move forward and move out of the bounds of grace. You don't want to step out of order, be in disorder. You don't want to do something that's ahead of God. You want to wait on the Lord, bam, for the perfect timing, for that alignment from heaven above in Jesus' name. When you are aligned with heaven, there is a Kairos anointing that begins to flow. And I believe many of you watching, God's bringing you into Kairos in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? The Lord is bringing you into divine Kairos, into divine alignment, which is why we must learn to humble ourselves, to yield ourselves, and to give ourselves to Jesus. Shit, his timing is perfect. His time. If you want to move in unprecedented, uncommon favor, then you must wait upon him and watch what God will do. Somebody say amen. Number two, the second key to growing in uncommon favor is obedience and sacrifice. Amen. Is obedience and sacrifice. Now, God, hear me. God will give you what nobody has when you do what nobody else does. I want to say that again. God will give you what nobody else has when you do what nobody else does. Somebody say, I feel the Holy Ghost. When you do what nobody else does, you will have what nobody else has. And that is what causes you, causes you to be distinct, to be outstanding, to be different. If you want to draw an uncommon favor, then you must have uncommon obedience. Okay? If you want to have out-of-the-box blessings, miracles, signs, and wonders, then you need to step out of the box. 
But many of us, we're so boxed into our reputation, to our repetitions, excuse me, to our cycles, our patterns, and our norms that we only receive and experience common favor. When you step out of the box, God will release uncommon favor. Now, friends, God is asking you to step out of the boat. That's right, you right there. God is asking you, he's inviting you ha -ha, to step out of the boat. Remember, Peter was the only one who walked on water, whether for a millisecond or a second or a few seconds, and he began to sink. Nobody else dared to faith it, to risk it, to step out of the boat, but it was only Peter. Only he was able to experience that uncommon favor miracle because he had uncommon faith, radical obedience and sacrifice. I'm telling you, God wants to show up and show off, but you must do your part and you must have uncommon obedience. Somebody say amen. Number three, the third way, and if you're receiving today, I want you to give some hearts and likes. Somebody say amen. Help me to build up the room in the name of Jesus on this favor Friday, Shaka Baba in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, number three, the third way you grow in uncommon favor is you discern moments and seasons. All right, you discern moments and seasons. Now, why is this important? Because your Kronos is turning into Kairos. And we must have the gift, the spirit of discernment to discern the unusual that God's doing, okay? Not every day is gonna be a big miracle, okay? I mean, you can believe for big miracles, right? Or big blessings every day. Or you can thank God for the little things every single day, the things that seem and look mundane, but that is actually a setup for your momentum. And so when you discern correctly, then you're able to receive and step into that momentum, that launching in Jesus' name. There are times and seasons of launching. Times and seasons, all right? Just like the military, you think about the military, they're trained, they're educated, and there's a time to go out to the battle. There's a time to be deployed, okay? Too many of us are trying to go out and do things, but it's not the perfect timing of God. There is a perfect timing to everything, and that is Kairos, that's divine alignment. And when you discern moments and seasons, come on somebody, then you are able to foo, step into the realm of uncommon favor. Somebody say amen. I feel the Lord right now. I feel the Lord right now. Last night on our 7M Glory Equip Zoom webinar, I talked about making the most of every opportunity. And many of us miss our moments because we're so busy, distracted, looking at something else. You need to look at the Lord and you need to pray. The other translations say, make the best use of your time. Make the best use of your time. So here I am in Miami region. And for many years, I knew I needed to meet a certain general, a certain man of God for many years. But it's been blocked, it's been delayed, it's been a warfare. And there's been things that have, you know, not allowed me to meet this general, meet this man of God. Why? Because meeting <clears throat> one person, meeting a person can open up doors, but it will also release warfare. Okay, you need to understand that. Every mantle, every moment has blessings and curses, has blessings and warfare that's attached to it. But I knew that I needed to meet this man of God because we have many mutual friends. He's a general, he's a true general, and being used greatly and mightily today. And um, I knew me coming to Miami this week, I knew that there was something God was stirring in my spirit. Ha! So guess what? I called my friend, I said, hey brother, I wanna go to this man of God's church in the morning, on Sunday morning. I wanna make the most use, the best use of our time. I discerned the moment and the season. And then my friend, Apostle Daniel calls and says, Dr. Ben, we got you front row seats. The man of God is excited to meet you. He's excited to meet you and greet you. And I knew in my spirit right then, bam, that this was a divine appointment. 
Let me tell you, God is getting a divine appointment ready. All it takes is one, one moment, one prayer, one song, one seed, one contact, and this could be that one broadcast. Somebody say amen. So I knew that now, all right, boom, it's confirmed in the name of Jesus. It is written, it will not be overridden, it will not be overwritten. So I said, okay, bam, bam, let's go. So the Lord put it on my heart to prepare a gift. When you discern the moment and the season, you will make the most of every opportunity. And that is how you grow in uncommon favor. You wanna stand out? You, you, you wanna shine in the glory of God? It doesn't mean you're gonna try to perform and be a perfectionist to try to win favor with people. You're not a butt kisser, okay? You are not a holy, holy butt kisser, okay? You're a holy ghost pleaser. Which means that when you are obedient to honor and to risk and to take the step out of the boat, then bam, hey, God begins to bless you with uncommon favor. Somebody say favor. So I got a gift already for the man of God this Sunday morning. Let's see. Whatever God has purposed in heaven cannot be revoked nor reversed. Somebody say amen. Discern the moment and the season and you will gain greater uncommon favor. Do whatever you have to do to step into the room, to get there. Do whatever you have to do to get yourself in that place and watch what happens. Let me share a quick story. This weekend, earlier last weekend, I was in Pennsylvania. Thursday, we were at a church and there was only 10 people there, okay? Only 10 people there. Now, I need you to hear me. Only 10 people there, but I felt the pleasure of God. My gosh, I was crying. I was in tears because his presence was so sweet, so strong. Beautiful church, older, traditional church, only 10 people. During the worship, our friends, Pastor Todd and Jody Eckhart, the Lord touched me, ministered to me, and I said, this may be my most favorite meeting I've had all year, though it's the smallest crowd. But guess what? I preached my heart out, I shared from my heart, and I shared, hear me, that this might be the one that changes everything. This meeting, the service might be the one you, there might be one person in here that could be the next Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson, Billy Graham. And as I shared my heart out, all of a sudden, guess what? There's a pastor there and she comes up and says, you can use my church building Friday and Saturday. Amen. Open door. You have to discern the moment and the season. And then God will release uncommon favor over your life. Well, guess what? The Lord blessed. The Lord showed up many miracles, many miracles. Discern the grace, the moment that's in front of you. All right. Number four, how do you grow in uncommon favor? How do you grow in uncommon favor? Somebody say amen. Number one, the first way is yield yourself to the Lord. The second way is radical obedience and sacrifice. The third way is discern moments and seasons, amen? And number four, the fourth way you grow in uncommon favor, it is faithfulness in the little. Let me tell you, friends, many of us are looking for the big, so we forsake the small. Many of us forsake the great grandiose, so we, we forsake the faithfulness. Listen, guys, there are way too many spiritual drifters Way too many drifters, way too many people that are just looking. God is in the whisper. He's not in the fire. He's not in the earthquake, the whirlwind. He's in the whisper. And that daily communion of the little things, your daily habits, amen. That faithfulness causes you to have favor in the eyes of God. It's being faithful in the little. It's a heart posture. It's an attitude of the spirit. Faithfulness in the little. Somebody say amen. Now, Jesus, when we're faithful in the little, then God will entrust us with much more. Everybody has 24 hours in a day. We all got 24 hours in a day. If we're gifted, if we're granted another day to wake up, amen, in Jesus' name, praise God. It's a gift, it's a grace, that's favor in itself. But what are you doing with that 24 hours of favor? What are you doing? And many of us, we want the big thing, the big sell, the big breakthrough. Instead of thanking God for the little every day, daily, minute by minute, hour by hour. Come on, somebody. Rebe Soto. 
That faithfulness prepares you for your suddenly and for your breakthrough. The Bible says, consecrate yourselves today. For tomorrow, I will do great and wondrous things amongst you. You will never step into the great and the miraculous and the wondrous if you're not faithful, prepared, consecrated in the little today. What you do today determines your tomorrow, okay? What you do today determines your tomorrow. So you must be faithful in the little with your prayers, with your giving, with your serving, your sacrifice. Be faithful in all that God commands you to do and calls you to be involved in somebody say amen. Be faithful in every hour. We all have 24 hours in a day. What are you doing with your 24 hours? What are you doing with every hour, every minute, every second? Let everything that has breath, let it praise on. When you're faithful, you will stand out and you will shine bright in an ungodly, lawless, rebellious generation. When you're faithful with the little, with the things that God gives you. It may seem and feel like a minuscule, nothing assignment. But that assignment is important to God. Every little thing is important in the kingdom of heaven. Somebody say amen. All right. Now, number five, how do you grow in favor with God? Praise the Lord. How do you grow in favor with God? Intimacy and prayer. You grow in favor with God and with man. Uncommon favor through intimacy. Thank you, Jesus. Through intimacy. Jean God works in unusual, mysterious ways. And when you're one with him, he trusts you and he knows. Look at that. Does he go on his side in the pool? So funny. When you're one with him, he knows that you will not be offended by his adventurous ways. Let me, let, me, let me say that in a different way. When you're one with him in love and intimacy, he knows that you're not going to complain. You're not going to whimper and, and, and you're not going to weep. You're not going to be a cry baby. You're not going to be a boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. All right. You're not going to have crocodile tears because he knows that he can trust you to trust him in an adventurous roller coaster way. My gosh. Intimacy, prayer, love. Hallelujah. When you're in love with Jesus, God begins to bask his love, his grace, his favor upon you. When you are in love with the Lord, he knows. That there is somebody wild and crazy enough, out of their mind enough to be a believer and to have faith in his word. Jesus, somebody say hallelujah. My God, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Intimacy and prayer is how you grow in uncommon favor. Uncommon favor. Undeniable, irreversible, evidential, out of the world, unusual, unprecedented. Grace, gift, favor that will not be denied. That, that cannot be ignored. It's a commanding, a demanding authority and presence to, that is felt all around. It's called the glory of God. It's called the hand of Jesus. And when you move for God, God moves for you. When you fight for God, God fights for you. When you're faithful to God, God is more than faithful with you and for you. But when you are in love with the Lord, are walking hand in hand, intimacy, fellowship with Jesus Christ, then God begins to show up, show off. He rolls out the red carpet. He does the unthinkable, the unimaginable. Come on, though it may be delayed, it will not be denied. He begins to do things in your life that is only found in the Bible, in the book of Acts. Miracles, signs, and wonders. The supernatural is your portion. When you walk with God, there's such a confidence, such an authority, such a boldness, such a knowing in your knower. Because you know God, you walk with authority. You walk with confidence. Amen. Because you know God and God knows you, wherever you go, shook, angels manifest, angels show up, and things begin to happen. Things are going to happen in your life. 
that have never happened before. God's going to do things in you, through you, for you, with you, around you. God's going to do things with your life that would only be believed if it was a fiction children's book. Jesus. Jesus. Look at the nations. Watch and see that God is doing a good thing, a new thing. Somebody say amen. God's about to do a miracle in your life. It's called uncommon favor. Isaac sowed in a time of famine and he found favor in God. God blessed him. He grew rich and even more rich until they became very wealthy. It's because God blessed him. When God blesses you, he adds no sorrow to it. When God blesses you, it's not from the north, east, south, or west, but it's from the Lord himself. When God blesses you, it's from his hand, not from a corrupted, not from a tainted, not from a witchcraft, manipulated, colluded, uh, occultic, binding hand. Only he gets the glory. He deserves all the credit. All the glory goes to Jesus. He's doing a new thing. Someone say uncommon, uncommon favor in your life. Jesus grew in favor with God and with man because he grew in wisdom and in stature. Hallelujah. That word uncommon means unusual. It means out of the ordinary. It also means out of the box, remarkable. God's about to show up and show off. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? I'm declaring over you today from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Let the word of the Lord come to pass. Let the word of God come to pass. Come on, lift up your hands. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, someone say uncommon favor, unusual doors, unusual promotion, unusual breakthrough, unusual miracles, unusual answered prayers, unusual financial provision, unusual connections, unusual, come on, Rebecca, yes, so he's about to release unusual, uncommon, unprecedented, Ruka Sata. There's going to be an unusual grace on your life. Come on, I want you to comment unusual and uncommon. He's going to do what only he can do in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Give us some hearts and lives, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I want to begin to pray over some people. I'm feeling the fire of God. Somebody say amen. Rebe soko rabata. Rebe sete rabata. Jebe sete rabasato. Rebe soto rabana. I want to minister over some people in the name of Jesus. Come on, Favor Friday. Rababasoto. Thank you, Jesus. Favor Friday, my friends. And I declare that a measure of favor that God has placed upon my life, he will give you in Jesus' name. It's getting dark in the room because the clouds come and it's over us. And it's raining now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Favor Friday, Pastor Carlo. Listen, Shana Monday. That's right. Come on, give some hearts and lights. Come on. Build it up, pump it up. Get excited for God. Get connected to the Word of God in Jesus' name. Rama Siti Arabrasata. Yes, favor's over you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Judy Nieto, that is a new name for me. Let me pray for you, Judy Nieto. Glory be to God. Judy Nieto, I see books on the inside of you. Amen, I see books on the inside of you. I see books. I see a birthing. I see businesses. Business plans, business contracts, projects. In fact, there's something big that God's going to do for you very soon. Something big, Judy Nieto. You've been working on some things. You've been very faithful. Hallelujah. That's right. Favor like rain. That rain is pouring down. That favor. Amen. The latter rain. Amen. Come on. But Judy Nieto, I see that you've been working very hard, very diligently on things. And there's something... God's about to add on to you. God's about to do in your life. 
It's going to be miraculous, stupendous. In fact, it's even a realm of justice and comeback. Because of all the injustice you've experienced in years past, and because how you grew out of it, got healed and became whole, he's about to bless you. Amen. He's going to honor you in front of your enemies. So this is truly a season of great grace in your life. If you receive that, say amen. Listen, if you want me to pray for you, I want you to comment, pray for me. And you must share this broadcast if you want me to pray for you. Amen. You must share this broadcast. Don't lie to the Lord, all right? Don't be a liar, all right? If you want me to pray for you, comment, pray for me, and comment, share. But you must pray, you must share this broadcast. Somebody say amen. Spread the love. Is there someone in your little network that needs to hear this word about uncommon favor? Amen, Mandy. The drought is over. Come on, somebody. Rabbi Sata. Mandy Allen, let me pray for you. Thanks for sharing, by the way. Let me pray for you. Mandy Allen, glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. I see over you, Mendy, the Lord is giving you focus, clarity, and direction. I see over you where there's been a bit of a stress going on around you. Like, I just see like, you know, there's a busyness. There's all these things that are pulling your attention. That are, how about that, are trying to pull your attention and your focus, this and that. I just keep saying, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. But the Lord's giving you clarity and focus for the audience of one, the one thing I ask, one thing that I seek is to see the face, the beauty of the glory of God. So God is about to clear your table. I see God clearing your schedule and I see the Lord over you, Mindy Allen. God's about to clear the way ahead of you, for you, in front of you. God is clearing the way for your life. Somebody say amen. So Lord, I thank you for Mindy Allen for clarity, clear air, clear airwaves. Huh! In the name, and the Lord even says, forgive any grievances and offenses. Amen. If you want me to pray for you, comment, pray for me and share. You must share this broadcast. Spread the love, spread the word. Amen. Rabba soto, rabo soto, rabrasa, tarabrasa. Now let me pray for you, Rob Filler. You know I love you and I do favor you. Because God favors you. But Mr. Rob, thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord. I see, uh, I see a large house. I see you in front of a large house. And obviously I know you're a real estate agent and et cetera. So that's not the prophetic part. But I see you in front of a large house. And the Lord says, I'm going to put you in front of large people. I'm going to put you in front of large people, large donors, large funders. In fact, God is putting you in the minds of breakthrough people. God is putting you on the minds of next level people. So God, the Lord says, people are talking about you. And the Lord says, people of influence and affluence are talking about. You're being talked about in the back rooms, on phone calls, conversations, emails. You're being talked about. You're being gossiped on, but in a good way. Thank you. God's talking about you. Like the Lord said over Job, have you seen Job? The Lord said, have you seen a robe? Have you seen a robe? Hallelujah. For the Lord says the latter part of Job's life, he doubled. Job 42, he doubled. So the latter part of this year, hear me, Mr. Rob, the latter part of this year, you will step into the Job 42 anointing of double. Somebody say amen. If you receive that, say amen. Wow, what a word. Let me pray for a few more people here. Jason McWhorter. Jason McWhorter. Rabba Basotom. I see you on a boat. And the Lord is saying, <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to fish. I'm going to teach you how to fish. I see you on a boat. And the Lord's going to teach you how to fish. You've, you've been fishing and it's felt like you haven't caught much. Yeah, you're grateful for the catch. But you know that there's more. And the Lord's saying, throw your net on the other side. 
I want to teach you how to fish. So I see the Lord teaching you. And I see a new alignment. I see a new thing. Somebody say amen. It is pouring rain outside. Hallelujah. Bang, bang. Pour down like rain. Pour down like rain. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is going to connect you with some new people. You've been crying out, Mr. Jason, you've been crying out for change and for breakthrough. And the Lord is going to connect you with new people. Uh -huh. With new people. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you receive that, say amen. Wow, he's doing a new thing. Let me know if that makes sense. This lady here, Soraya Shiloh Sohana Samuel. That's a lot of S's in your name. Soraya Shiloh Sohana Samuel. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says deliverance is coming to you. Breakthrough is coming to you. Deliverance in your mind and your family and your finances. Jesus. Rebe Sotorabra. Just pray. I, I'm getting so caught up in the glory right now. Zirabasatara. Uncommon. Uncommon deliverance. Uncommon breakthrough over you. Soraya Shiloh Sahana Samuel. Uncommon. Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the fire of God. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Bam. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, that's right. Connect. I receive. I connect with the man of God. With the anointing on his broadcast. Glory to God. It is pouring out there. Shoo. Jesus. And Soraya, the Lord has not forgotten about you. He sees your tears. He's heard your prayers. He's heard your cries. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you, Soraya. He's holding your hand. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. That is right here. He's going to dry your eyes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. He's going to bless you in front of the people who broke you down. He's going to bless you in front of those who tore you down. Are you hearing me, Soraya? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My gosh. Just lift up your hands. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. On this Friday, this favor Friday, even as it's pouring rain just right outside here in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, even as there's been flash floods, Jesus, record-breaking, historic flash floods in South Florida. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. I want you to comment uncommon favor, uncommon favor. Amen. Glory be to God. Now listen, people of God, if you've been blessed today, say amen. In this prophetic atmosphere, I want you to bless the Lord. In this prophetic atmosphere, I want you to bless God. I want you to obey the Lord, obey the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want you to honor him by sowing a seed of faith. Amen. By sowing a seed of faith. Sowing a seed of honor. Praise God. Sow into this prophetic atmosphere. Amen. And we are commenting and posting the ways to give. But as you sow, I want you to comment favor. I want you to comment favor as you sow. Comment favor. Amen. Give sparingly so you can reap sparingly. Hallelujah. We must understand when grace is present, we must respond. And let me tell you, this is a time and season for uncommon favor. 
Uncommon favor. Somebody say amen. Uncommon favor. We have pinned the ways to give. Amen. Be generous. Believe. And expect God to show up and show off. For he will. Let me tell you, he surely will. Amen. He's not a respecter of man. He's not a respecter of persons. Hallelujah. But I want you to comment favor as you sow, as you bless the Lord. Partake of his ministry. Let me tell you, I'm going to Cuba on Monday, y'all. We need your prayers. We're believing for a mighty harvest of souls, miracles. And uh, we're believing for $10,000 to come in for this mission trip to Cuba. So I want you to sow sparingly and partner with us. Because you're sowing into souls. You're partnering with this miracle soul winning ministry. Amen. So consider giving a large donation, a large seed. And partner with the harvest, the Lord of the harvest. Henriette, bless you. Good to see you. Zenmar WT. Lashi Chanel. <clears throat> Rob Filler, Judy Nieto. Glory to God. As you sow, come in favor. Hallelujah. On this favor Friday. Bless the Lord. Juan Martinez, Patrice, Sharon Smith, Pastor Sharon. Listen, I know somebody out there is watching today. I want you to heed the word of God. And consider partnering with me and us for a Cuba mission trip. Not only are you sowing into this word and this atmosphere, but you're sowing into the ministry of miracles. Soul winning for Cuba. Isn't it incredible? I mean, I'm here in Miami, there's record-breaking flash floods, and on Monday we're supposed to fly to Cuba, and now there's a warship off the coast of Cuba and Miami. Are you kidding me? You can't make this stuff up. Everywhere we go, we are on assignment. Amen. Sherry, God bless you. Tanya, God bless you. Soraya, bless you. Kimberly, bless you. Glory be to God. Come on, on this Shabbat. Bless and honor God with your substance, with your faith. This is an act of worship. Amen. Let me show you what's going on right outside right there. Let me show you what's going on. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see all that rain and wind, but it is pouring, y'all. It is pouring. Hallelujah. Glory reigns. Amen. Glory reigns. Shana Manda. Thank you, Sherry. Bless you. Glory be to God. Yeah, pray with us. We're going to head out to Cuba on Monday. We'll be there for over a week. It is not a coincidence. This Russian ship is off the coast of Cuba, and we're going to Cuba. You can't make the stuff up, y'all. You cannot make the stuff up. Well, anyways, thank you all for your love and your prayers. Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, if you receive today, say amen. I love you. God bless you. Make sure you share, you like, you follow. And watch what God's going to do in your life. Uncommon favor. God bless you. Love you.